avoid the, the landing area. Well, you can't see it there. Now you watch right here. He put his foot in between the two feet of J.J. Heldebrand. And you know, under PBA rules, that's automatic ejection. That's an automatic flagrant too, even if there was no contact. It's almost like when you take a swing at a player and you don't connect. I think psychologically, a player, when you shoot, and you know that there's a, a foot that's gonna that's going under you. That, that I mean I, I think that's what the rationale for that rule is. And Olsen Rasella, a vital cog in the way San Miguel plays its uh, this offense. Is, this is huge. Oh, this is really huge because we talked about how important it was for Barangay and Erba to disturb or disrupt the rotation of San Miguel. Now you've got a key player in Olsen Rasella ejected. Well, let's go now to uh, Patricia Hizon at courtside for a report. Coach Shaw talked about moving the ball better and doing a better job on distributing the leather. Now, in the wild card series, they averaged 22 assists per ball game as we took a look at Melissa Rosella, the wife of Olsen Rosella. You know, the San Miguel Bearman averaged 22 assists per ball game in the wild card series, but in this quarterfinal series, this has drastically dropped to 10 assists per ball game. Now, this is a big factor. Before this ball game, I talked to Olsen about this, and he said that he never has defense. is obviously taking them away from what they want to do. The Bearmen are forced to play a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Now, they got to make a conscious effort to have more assists and Olsen actually told me that he's willing to lead the charge and give those assist statistics back on the side and in the favor of the Bearmen but what would that what will happen to them now with Olsen out of the playing court Jude? well you know the reason why they have a lot less assists is uh, obviously uh, Mike Cortez is out Jonas Villanueva hasn't played Bonbon bon Custodio really is not a true point guard uh, especially coming into the PBA and it's really only been Olsen Rosella and J.J. Helgebrand already is starting to take advantage of the fact that Rosselli is out of the ball game. I talked earlier to uh, San Miguel assistant coach Pido Harenge, and he told me that there is a slight chance that Jonas Villanueva might be able to play. He's down with a shoulder injury, but maybe he'll get the call because, boy, they certainly need a point guard at this stage to relieve Bon Bon Custodio. Here's Artadi pushing it up. Bounces it to Tubid. Artadi from the corner. Thought about it. Takes it. Washington with a rebound. 9-2 our score. A seven-point lead for Ginebra. Custodio floats. Nothing there. 2-1-2, two two, fast break. Artadi cross court to Helterbrand. JJ against Montiveros. Here's Eric Menk. Inside he goes. Stripped away. Almost yet stolen by Custodio. Here comes San Miguel. Custodio all the way. Fouled by Artadi. Now, major adjustments here San Miguel has to do with Bonbon bon Custodio now playing point guard position. You will want Bonbon bon Custodio not only to take a lot of shots, but to get the ball moving. We've got a timeout here. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Back here at the Cuneta Astrodome for game number three. And Lordi Tugade now in the ball game. He is our other hot seat player. And he was the uh, finals MVP in the 05 06 Fiesta Conference. Just going back to Olsen Rosella's ejection, you remember Paul Artadi was also ejected in a very similar situation. There was no malicious intent. But under PBA rules, if your foot is in between the two feet of a jump shooter, and when he lands, there is a possibility of a dangerous contact, you're automatically ejected. That's the rule. Well, I talked to Commissioner about that, and uh, his explanation was there were three factors that had to be involved, and we'll go over it maybe when we have time later for, for them to overturn the flagrant two. Here's a loose ball out to Wilson. 11 on the shot clock. Helterbrand sets it up once again for Hinebra. Helterbrand crosses over, takes the three. Off right, offensive rebound, Willie Wilson, but that did not hit the rim. Although, of course, the coaching staff of Barangay Ginebra claiming that that grazed it. So still a seven-point advantage for Ginebra. Pacana now in the ball game. Custodio running the play. Inside they go once again. And Eric Menk, you know, he's been doing a better job, at least early on, against Dorian Peña. Well, he's very focused defensively. 
I think there's also a reason why Chris Pacana was checked in by uh, coach Joseph Vichico. He plays a much tougher defense than Paul Artadi against Bonbon bon Custodio, at least on the switch off. But yes, uh, Pacana is right there on uh, Bonbon bon Custodio, and he's there for defensive purposes more, more for his offense, more than his offense. So here's San Miguel once again. Washington out to Honteveros. Inside they go. This is really their primary play. Peña misses again, but a nice follow by Washington. That's what I was talking about. That San Miguel has to capitalize on its size. If Dorian Peña is able to post himself very deep in the low block, then he's going to be able to get off good attempts. And Jay Washington could be there for the offensive rebounding. Two bit, nothing there. Wilson open, 16 footer, book it. So the lead back up to seven once again. As San Miguel walks it up, Custodio gets a screen and a hand check foul will be called on Pacana. For Barangay Nebra, Helterban has scored nine out of his first 11 points. Let's go back down the court side to Patricia Hizon. Hey, Jude, I caught up with Olsen in the dugout. He says that this is the first time in his career to get a flagrant two called against him and to be thrown out of a ball game. Now, he explained that he was merely stopping a collision with J.J. Helderbrand in that play. Now, he hopes that whatever it is that happens to him just fires up his teammates as we bring the action back to you. Thank you very much, Patricia. And, you know, I, I know Olsen, and uh, I don't think uh, he's the type of player who really would purposely do anything uh, dangerous. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, also, in a situation like that, you're not going to try anything uh, untoward because exactly. everybody's looking at you. Exactly. So if and there's something malicious. He knows his team needs him. Yeah. You know, he's not going to endanger his uh, chances of staying in the ball game. Well, we feel for Oates and Rosella, but you know, that's basketball, that's the rule. And in the same way that Paul Artadi was ejected on a similar situation in Ginebra's game against Rainer Schein. However, something like that, because there was no malicious in death, he avoided a suspension. And I think I think the same thing will, uh, will go with Olsen Rosella. Offensive foul is called here on Peña. Mamanil in the ball game, by the way, uh, replacing Eric Menk, now guarding the oh, San Miguel big man. And you see what San Miguel is trying to do. They're trying to create the space now for Dorian Peña to go one-on-one -on -one against Billy Mamaril. Get him to seal Mamaril. But that time, you know, if there's a lot of space for you, you don't need to be able to push off against your defender. Inside they go to Willie Wilson. I see uh, Froilan Bagyon in the scorer's table. He's going to have to play because of uh, Rosella's absence. And maybe Jonas Villanueva isn't as healthy as we think yet. As Bagyon is the first one off the bench and as the see, point guard. Yes, and one more custodian now slides over to the two guard position where he's more comfortable. San Miguel down by seven inside to Peña once again. Double teamed once again. Kicks it out. Bagyon thought about the three. Nothing there. Tonton Ontiveros will take it and hit it. But a little hesitation there in the part of San Miguel in its offense. But you know, this is a no tomorrow game. You can't hesitate. If you've got an open shot, you've got to take it. And you have to have a high sense of confidence, a high level of confidence. Well, Bagyon doesn't only not play a lot of minutes, he doesn't play a lot of minutes in big game situations <laughs> yeah. like this. So I guess that's why he hesitated. When you talk about uh, level of confidence, you've got Tubid scoring and Bon Bon Custodio. That is a chink in his armor. His pounding of, of the ball, his carry, what you call the carry, and well, that's know, a violation. You know, Kenito, in game number one, he actually did it a few times, and then uh, the coaching staff of Barangay Ginebra just really harped on it, left and right. And then in game number two, the last game, they actually called Bonbon bon on that, and now they're looking for it. So that's one of the advantages of really continuous complaining. <laughs> the referees actually look for it now. Well, here's a... A steal on the part of Barangay Nebra and the inexperience of Froilan Bagyon making that happen. So Bagyon now on the left side. Down by six is San Miguel. Here's Peña, hands off to Ontiveros. Ontiveros trying to make some room for himself. Peña falling away from behind by Helterbrand. 
So the defense really clamping down on San Miguel. Barangay Ginebra up by six, 13.